Welcome to Ancient Words, where only the truth is told. Thank you for joining us once again on Ancient Words. Last week we studied from the first chapter of Genesis. This week we move on to chapter 2. Following our opening hymn, we, we encourage you to listen to the reading of chapter 2 by Alexander Scorby. At the end of our program today, we invite you to write down the contact information that you will be presented. In the meantime, please enjoy our opening hymn, following by the reading of Genesis chapter 2.
Chapter 2 Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. There is Delium and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon, the same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hiddekel, that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Again, I'd like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Ancient Words, where only the truth is told. In our last lesson, we studied from the first chapter of Genesis. In this chapter, we are told about the beginning, the beginning of it all, the beginning of the world, the beginning of us, the beginning of all the creatures great and small, beginning of life, period. In this chapter, chapter 2, in the first three verses, we are told how on the seventh day God rested from his labors. Let us begin reading by reading verses 1 and 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished with all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. It is true God spoke it into existence. However, it did take a lot of work. And so just like us, after a long day's work, mean it seven days for God, certainly he had to rest. After God ceased from creating, he rested, of course. The seventh day, that being the Sabbath, would later come to have specific meaning founded in the creation among the believers of God. And he blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because 
that in it he had rested from all his work which God had created and made. We see this in verse 3 of chapter 2. As God had blessed man at the gen Genesis 128 by giving him dominion over the earth, even so he blesses the seventh day. Blessings in the word of God thereby take on the idea of separating one thing from another and the giving of something spectacular to another. The blessing and sanctification would not actually take place until Moses received the law on Mount Sinai in the book of Exodus. However, the Holy Spirit reveals the fact that it would happen. In beginning in verse 4, we're told how God plants man into Eden and gives him law. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God had made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. The word generation in Hebrew is Thorodoth. It can mean many things like history or family generations. The statement these are the generations of the heavens and the earth stand as somewhat of a title for everything that is to follow. The contents of chapter 2 are not an explanation of chapter 1 but merely the beginnings of the story of history that have a brief overview of the creation. When we read from chapter 2 the entire creation had already been created and Moses, the author of Genesis, Genesis, is giving the earth's history. At this point, the plants did exist. We're told this in Genesis 1, 11, and 12. However, the ability to cultivate the plants had not yet begun due to there being no rain or man to prepare and plant the seeds. Rain eventually did come and did fall in some form in the form of a mist over the earth. <clears throat> and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. We read this in verse 7. Interestingly, the Bible tells us that man was created from dust as opposed to having come along by the evolutionary process. The creation of man from dust of the earth helps us to see the omnipotence of God. The breath of man is in his life, 1 Kings 17:17. 17, 17. So God breathed directly into the nostrils of man the breath of life. God was the creator and originator of man's life, and so as a living soul, he is created in the image of God. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant and in sight and good for food, and the tree of life in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The first was Pison, that is it which composeth the whole land of Havilah where there is gold and the gold of the land is good there is Bedelium and the onyx stone and the name of the second river is Gihon and the same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia and the name of the third river is Hadekai that is what goeth east of Assyria and the fourth water which we all know is the river Euphrates. Chapter 2 verses 8 through 14. The name Eden means delight. God placed man in a garden of delight filled with trees that provided food. Within the garden were two specific trees named the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of the good and evil. The location of Eden is given. 
A river came out of Eden to water the trees. After leaving Eden, the river divides into four separate rivers. Two of the rivers are known and two have an unknown origin, the Euphrates and Hedekai. We read of these in Daniel chapter 10 verse 4. These are known of location and place, however the location of the Pison and Gihon are unknown. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, and saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Genesis 2, 15-17 Note, the man was placed in such a garden of delight to have an eternal vacation, rest and relaxation, Man was originally designed to be a worker. No, God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. <clears throat> Secondly, God did not place man in a Garden of Delight and say, Live any way you want to. God gave the man a few ground rules, a law. Man was not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The consequences eating of that tree would be a violation of God's command and result in spiritual death. Again, this goes back to the idea of Genesis where we read in the statement, it is good seven times. One may ask, why would God place such a tree in the presence of man and then prohibit him from eating it? The answer may be found in the nature of God in Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 24. And so desires his people to be good. Uh, we read this in Romans 12 verse 1 as well. Again, if man could obtain the knowledge of good and evil by eating of the fruit of the tree, why forbid it? Again, the answer is found in the, the divine nature of God and what he expects from his created beings. Divine law was given in the garden as man obeyed the law. He was assured that he would not die. As man kept the law, he gained a better of understanding of what was right and wrong. However, as man violated God's commands, he found out about sin and righteousness from his own guilty experience and so died spiritually. He learned the lesson through shame as opposed to learning the lesson the way God intended man to learn. <clears throat> Remember, God placed the tree of knowledge in the garden and gave Adam law then called this arrangement very good. Throughout history the Lord finds those who truly love him with such arrangements. We read of this in 1 John 5 verse 3. We move on to verse 18 through 25. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the earth. Fowl of the earth, the water, the air. He brought them all forth and brought them unto Adam. to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to come upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. <clears throat> Genesis 1.27 states that God made both male and female on the sixth day of creation. The sixth day was the day Adam clearly named all the land animals. The Lord had given man dominion over the animals by the process of giving them names to the animals, and the man, il man illustrates this fact. Interestingly, 
The woman was not formed of the dust, as was Adam, Genesis 2, 7, but from one of Adam's ribs. The ordinance of God forms the root of that tender love which the man loves the woman as himself, and by which marriage becomes a type of fellowship of love and life, which exists between the Lord and his church, Ephesians 6, 32. Note that the Lord God said, there was not an helpmeet for him. The woman is considered a helpmeet. The word Ezar is found 21 times in the Old Testament and is usually translated help, to give assistance, to aid. What did the man need assistance and aid doing? The man needed assistance in keeping God's laws, Genesis 2.16, he needed assistance in replenishing the earth through reproduction, Genesis 1.28, subduing and having dominion over animal life, Genesis 1.28, and tending the Garden of Eden, Genesis 2.15, that they may eat, Genesis 1.29. She was to be his partner in the work. The idea of a, the woman being the man's assistant in the work God gave man to do indicates her submission to him, Ephesians 5.25. The man could no more replenish the earth through reproduction alone as do all else that God gave the man to do. God's arrangement was for there to be a man and a woman working together. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man cleave, leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Genesis 2, 23-25 Adam was very pleased when he awoke from his deep sleep, and demonstrated his dominion over the woman by naming her as he named the animals. This is God's arrangement. Moses now interjects with divine revelation regarding the marriage relationship saying, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Jesus quoted this in relation to marriage in Matthew 19, 4 through 6. So that there is no doubt Genesis 2.24 relates to the marriage relationship. How shall the two be one? Adam was apart from me before she was created, but now they are together. They share the same work as a partnership now. Their work is keeping God's laws, replenishing the earth, subduing the earth, and working together in the Garden of, Good in, Garden of Eden. Likewise, today, man and wife are partners in the work of procreation and providing for the home. Just as the Lord's people, the Christian faith, are required to upkeep the church and continue the ministry of Jesus Christ even today. Next time, we will begin in chapter 3. If you would like to contact myself here at the Ancient Words Podcast, please feel free to email me at bestus1284 at gmail.com. Always, we ask you to subscribe to our page here at ancientwords.buzzsprout.com. You can also Find me on Facebook, Evangelist Ben C. Estes, from Henderson, Tennessee. Until next time, God bless you and God keep you. And now, please enjoy our closing hymn.
transport your hand in the hole. 